I love pickles. They're so good on everything and with everything. And they add a lot of that bright flavor that we look for on salads, sandwiches, charcuterie boards. And today we're gonna make four different pickles using basically one recipe. And I'm gonna just show you some different things you can do, some different spices you can add. We're gonna do pickled eggs, pickled cucumber, pickled red onion, and this is pickled kohlrabi. And these are quick pickles, fridge pickles. These are designed to go into the fridge after they've been pickled. They'll last a few months in the fridge and they're awesome and easy to do. I love pickles. Who doesn't love pickles? I love pickles. This here's a kohlrabi. It's not a very attractive rig, but it makes a decent pickle. Um, I'm just going to peel it and cut it into batons. It has a very white flesh inside and that'll take to dyeing with beets to make a purple colored pickle, which is really attractive. So we're going to use this guy to make pickles. Basically, I'm just going to square it off. These grow really well where I am located in the far northeast. So the farmers produce a lot of them, but people don't really eat them. So it's always a challenge to figure out what to make out of them. Now that it's peeled and kind of more square shaped, I'm just going to make half inch slices. And then I'm going to make half inch slices again. And now I've got batons and I will likely fix up the edges on some of them, but uh, these are basically ready to pickle. So we just want to make some nice batons. A little bit bigger than a French fry, uh, but if you want them smaller, that's totally fine as well. And you can see how white it is. It's like kind of a light colored turnip or radish has that sort of smell to it as well. Anyway, we're gonna pickle these guys here. We're gonna pickle these. We have a wide mouth mason jar here and we're just going to jam them in. You don't want them longer than your mason jar, obviously. So because these take up so much of the volume of the mason jar, you're not gonna need a lot of pickling vinegar for this batch. And you want to save room because we're going to put a slice of beet in here. And I have a beet. Uh, you want a red beet. You can use a pink beet. It'll still work. It won't be as dramatic, though. I'm going to quickly peel this guy. Slice him into little... Uh, it's about an inch long. By about an eighth of an inch. By an eighth of an inch little rectangle baton. And I'm just going to slide these guys in here. Okay, so this is prepped up. Now all we had to do is add the pickle brine. I have about 16 hard boiled eggs. Those I put in a pot of cold water, brought up to a boil, turn the stove off and time them for 12 minutes. And these will make a fantastic pickle. And to this very clean mason jar. So this mason jar went to the dishwasher and is clean. You always wanna make sure your mason jars are nice and clean. I'm gonna add some beets and that's gonna make these eggs shockingly purple. And I'm going to add some garlic, some peppercorns, and a cashmere red pepper that I happen to have on hand. You can add whatever you like, whatever flavors you want to add to your pickled eggs. You can find all kinds of different recipes and different suggestions, but this is what I'm going to add today. My hand doesn't fit in the mason jar, so I'm going to use a spoon to lower some of these eggs in. Maybe I'll throw some garlic and some of my beets to the bottom and then just sort of add in my eggs. They probably drop them in, but might break. And I don't want to break the eggs. Maybe I'll throw my pepper, my cashmere pepper in there, and my peppercorns, more beets. I'm gonna shake it up often over the next few weeks. So it's okay if uh, they don't, things don't have to be layered perfectly, basically. And I probably could have, Done a few more eggs, but that's okay. I 
got some headspace here. So this is ready for the pickling liquid, beets, garlic, some pepper, and a cashmere pepper. English cucumber. Not the best cucumber for pickling, but these grow here in Canada all winter long in commercial greenhouses. So these are readily available at the grocery store. It's March right now. So just lucky to have this. So because it's not really a very um, tough or crispy um, cucumber, normally pickling cucumber is smaller and has less water in it. Uh, so in order to compensate for that, we want to cut this fairly thick. Um, if we cut it too thin, it'll just get mushy and won't have the, the crunch or the desired texture that we want from a cucumber on, say, a hamburger or on a charcuterie board. So we're going to cut these a little bit thicker than we would in the summertime, but they'll make a decent quick pickle. And if you have your, if you're trying to get your pickle fix, uh, you have to make do with what you have. So we'll load our pickles into the jar. Again, the jar is nice and clean. We're going to load these pickles into it. And into this one, I have some coriander seed. Add a bit of them now. I have a few cloves. I'm going to add those in. We got a bunch of maybe a tablespoon worth of black peppercorns. I've also got some turmeric, and the turmeric is going to add that yellowy color to the pickles, which I find attractive. So we'll add that. Also, add going to add a tablespoon of dillweed tops, and throw in the rest of my pickles. And I have a cashmere pepper. I'm going to add in. So here's our filled up pickle jar. And it's ready for some pickle brine. I'm going to put this aside. I have a bunch of red onions, and I'm just going to take them and slice them up. I'll cut the ends off and cut them down the middle. And take anything off of there that is at all unappealing. Because these aren't going to be cooked and they're just going to be pickled, you don't want any of this tough skin on there because it will not soften up. And every once in a while, you're going to get a bite of like, a really papery pickled onion and that's not enjoyable so you really have to like make sure that you just get onion and then with these I'm gonna cut them this way along from the top to the bottom of the onion fairly uniform and you might end up with a piece like that I want to cut that up too so I'm gonna go through all these onions and then I'm gonna jam them in the jar So now we're going to load our onions into our jar and we're not going to add anything else to this. We're not going to add any other flavors or spices or anything like that. And I'm going to need another jar. Two jars of red onions chopped up and these are ready for us to add our brine in. So we'll move on to that stage next. The pickling liquid is really simple. It's just four ingredients. The first ingredient I have is salt. This is about three tablespoons or 50 grams of kosher salt. Put that in. Then I have about a cup or 300 grams of sugar. This is a natural cane sugar. That's why it has this slight brown color, but regular table sugar will do just fine. Then I have three cups or about 750 milliliters of vinegar. I'm using rice vinegar because I have some extra rice vinegar around. Normally we would use just plain white vinegar, but you can also use cider vinegar or any other kind of vinegar. Because this is a quick pickle and a refrigerator pickle, we're not really worried about how acidic things are. We're not trying to preserve these on the shelf for a long time. We're just trying to give an acidic flavor to vegetables or eggs as well that we're going to put in the fridge and keep in the fridge. So this is not necessarily a preserving technique, although it will preserve the food. This is more of a flavoring technique. So three cups of rice wine vinegar or white vinegar or whatever vinegar. And then a liter or four cups or a quart of water. Now I'm going to turn on my burner 
and I'm going to bring this to a boil. We're geared up. My pickling liquid is finished boiling. I let it boil for a couple of minutes. And while it was doing that, I boiled a few more eggs to fill up my mason jar. There's no sense having that empty space there. And we've got our red onion, our quick pickle, like our bread and butter pickle, and our kohlrabi. So a pro tip here is to, when you add the hot liquid to the jar, the jar is designed to withstand the heat, but sometimes they crack uh, and they can even shatter. So it's always a good idea to do this in some sort of a pan or container so that if this cracks, the liquid doesn't end up all over your kitchen uh, counter or wherever you're doing this. So that's a good tip to follow. Uh, also, another nice thing is if you have one of these funnels, these are fantastic. It just helps so you don't get a lot of pickled brine everywhere. We're just going to take and pour our pickling liquid. It's very hot over top of our various pickles. And if I didn't make enough, it's kind of a guess as to how much room is actually in there. Um, if you don't have quite enough, you're just going to have to maybe make another batch of the pickling liquid, which it looks like I'm going to have to do. So I'm a little short, um, but I'm going to make a little bit more and top it up. And I've got some lids here. I have some leftover pickle brine, which is totally fine. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a container, I'm going to put it in my fridge, and I'm going to leave it there until I want to make pickles next time. It'll last in the fridge inevitably. It's just water, vinegar, sugar, and salt. So I can just heat that up in the future. If I just want to make a small batch of pickles, I can take that, bring it to a boil, and pour it over whatever I want. So it's always handy to have that in the fridge. Uh, if you don't have room for it in your fridge, it's not really a high-value product. You can just use it to clean your drain. Next with these, I'm just going to let them cool down uh, so I can handle them because they're very hot to the touch. And when they're cooled down, I'm going to give them a little shake and then I'm going to put them in the fridge. So here are our pickles. Eggs, cucumbers, onions, and kohlrabi. So you can do this technique with all kinds of different vegetables. Squash, watermelon rind, uh, turnip is very similar to the kohlrabi radishes. The sky is the limit, really. You can also change the spices to whatever sort of spice level you want, whatever flavor profiles you're going for. And you can obviously change the thickness of the cuts. There's just a lot of opportunities to make something great out of this. What I like to do is shake or like you can see where the egg will be sitting against the jar and that part will not turn pink as fast. So after a day, I'm going to just sort of rotate the jar and try to get those eggs to move around so that they get an even color. They will generally turn purple all on their own, but it's nice to help them along to try to get an even color. With the pickled eggs or with any of these, all of the food that's in here is totally edible right away, but it has not been affected by the pickle enough to make it worth eating at this point. With the pickled onions, generally what you're looking for is you're waiting for them to turn pink. You could eat these tomorrow, but they're probably better in two or three days. And what you're really looking for with this is the color. That's what makes pickled red onions really cool, is that they turn pink and they look really cool. Uh, same with the pickled kohlrabi. You can eat it right away, but it won't be very impressive until the pickled brine works its way into the vegetable, which is going to take a few days and you also wanted to turn that pink color these pickles you could start eating them tomorrow there's no problem with that but they'll develop their best flavor in three or four days the eggs you probably want to not eat the eggs for i would say seven to ten to fourteen days somewhere in that zone you can try one to see where it's at but you really want that pickle brine to penetrate all the way into the egg how long are these good for well these are quick pickles and these are designed to go into the fridge as soon as they cool down. They will live in the fridge their entire life until they've all been eaten. These are not safe to leave out on the counter. These are not safe to put away in the pantry. These are just for refrigeration. These are refrigerated quick pickles. That being said, if you keep them in the fridge, they have a pretty long life. Uh, these will last probably 
three to six months, but you probably should and will eat them before then. I would say three months is a good time period to try to eat all your refrigerator pickles. Uh, same with the rest of them. They basically would last that long, but they start to deteriorate after a while. They get a little mushy. The vinegar acts on the cell structure of the product and it loses its snap or its crunch. So if that starts to happen, it's probably time to use it up, toss it, and do another batch. Fantastic, fun thing to do on the weekend. And this is just stuff that was around the pantry. It is winter. There's nothing seasonal. Just all of these things were just here. These are just winter storage vegetables and eggs and some hothouse cucumbers. So you can do this basically all year round and have some nice fun pickles in your fridge to play around with. It's only a day later and these pickles are already looking fantastic. Look at the kohlrabi. It's like so dark pink and it's like almost neon. It's shocking. I mean the eggs too. Look at that. Those little bit of beets in there have really changed the color of them. These are going to have to go a couple more weeks. The turmeric that I put in here is mixing up beautifully with the pickles and giving them a slight yellow green color. And you can see all of those spices commingling in there. And then look at these nice light pink onions. They look fantastic. And so happy with the way that this turned out. And this is only the second day. These things are going to be in the fridge for days, weeks. It's only going to get better. Pickle. Why wouldn't you? Just pickle.